right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Tamara Schenk, who's from CSO Insights. How are you doing, Tamara? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, John. Excellent. And, and Tamara is co-author of the book, Sales Enablement, a Master Framework to Engage, Equip and Empower a World-Class Sales Force. And she is the leading person on conducting research into sales enablement. So I just thought I'd start with a foundational question, because as I was saying to you before we came on air, um, a lot of people uh, have different definitions of what sales enablement really means. So what, what's, your, what's your definition of sales enablement? Yeah, sales enablement is it how we define it, and that's based on our research and our work with clients and also on my real-life experience. Mm. Uh, we define it as a collaborative strategic discipline that is designed to increase sales results by providing consistent and effective enablement services for salespeople and their managers um, so that they can add value in every customer interaction. Excellent. So, so. so, so let's, <laughs> let's break that down a little bit. When you yeah. say um, services, what kind of services are you talking about? Yeah, so for many people, um, sales enablement is another word for sales training. For others, it's all about content and technology. Mm -hmm. For others, it's sales effectiveness or sales excellence or sales readiness or all these kind of things. And, and what you see behind these different perceptions is that people usually look at sales enablement from their current functional perspective. So if somebody's in marketing, oh yeah, we're doing sales enablement for years, so <laughs> that's our job. Mm -hmm. And if you ask sales training people or L&D people, oh, we're enabling the sales force, that, that's what we do all the time. And the problem is that if many different functions provide services or help, however you call it, to the sales force, it is it is sometimes really chaotic for them. Mm -hmm. So and so if you know, imagine if the value messaging you learn in, in your product training is not consistent to what you um um, learn in your playbook or on your value messaging guidelines or elsewhere, then it's just, well, what should you do? What should you use? And then you don't use anything of these things. And this is why um, we use the term enablement services. So we want to make sure that it covers all areas of training, all areas of content. That means customer facing content, enablement content that's used internally, uh, and also coaching. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we are the one who say sales enablement is not only for salespeople. We have to make sure that at least the frontline sales managers work along those lines and mm -hmm. that they coach accordingly. So when you say you have a, a framework, because obviously, as you say, there's all these different things going on. Um, so talk a little bit about the framework and who really owns uh, sales enablement at the end of the day, or is it a shared responsibility? Two great questions. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's start with the framework. <laughs> and yeah, it's just so important because clarity is so much needed as enablement is growing very, very fast mm -hmm. and the confusion is growing at the same speed exactly. is what we perceive. <laughs> yeah. So one of the reasons to, to come out with that book. So the framework we are providing, um, it, it's called a sales enabled clarity model. And um, it comes in the form of a diamond uh, because of just uh, what we said everybody wants to help sales in an organization mm -hmm. and if, if people um, begin to to understand this um, as an um, unpolished as a rough diamond mm -hmm. so everybody's doing something and you want to form that into a cut and polished diamond and that's actually the way how to how to implement uh, sales enablement um, so the framework um, we use has a couple of facets it starts with a customer because we are living in the age of the customer, sure. so they make the buying decisions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can automate whatever we want internally. Buyers make buying decisions. Mm -hmm. So we want to equip salespeople that they can be successful along the customer's path. Um, we have sponsorship strategy and charter at the bottom of the diamond because it's not working not having a sponsor, not having executive mm -hmm. leadership uh, who is buying into this. And usually you need marketing, sales, and then products, ideally uh, mm -hmm. on the same page. <clears throat> and having a formal vision of what is it what we want to achieve is really important. And we see this year over year that organizations who work with a formal approach have 
around 27% better quota attainment. So it makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we look at other facets like what, what are my target groups I'm currently serving? What are the enablement services I'm currently providing? And then there is three facets about the inner workings, which means I have to organize my cross-functional collaboration in some mm -hmm. way. It's just not working. Oh, I need this next week <laughs> <laughs> from somebody else. It should be organized in some way. Uh, I need what we call a production process and how to do all these things so that I can be scalable. And of course, it's technology and that's mm -hmm. it's, it's its own facet. So that enablement technology should ideally be integrated in 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 the core CRM system. So it sounds like to me then um, there needs to be an element of planning, uh, you know, a good element of planning and execution in this and bringing in different people and oversight. And these are all things that, um, let's say, traditionally um, sales hasn't been the greatest place for for process or planning. I mean, some sort of... but. It, <laughs> It's been a little bit of a, a free for all at times. Um, so, um, how important it, is it to introduce, you know, this level of kind of discipline into the process? It is important on many different levels. So, if you're an organization, you want to start with sales enablement, and you don't have a functional, a well-implemented sales process, really covers how this organization can sell successfully. You have a very hard time uh, to achieve anything because, in our experience, and what I also learned in my in my own practitioner. Uh, career, you cannot put enablement services in the middle of nowhere. It's not working. So they have to be connected to a process and methodology framework, which is actually a sales operations responsibility to do it. The more strategic and the more advanced the sales ops function is, the easier it is for sales enablement. Um, and how both teams collaborate, that can be designed on individual level. But it brings me to another question I didn't answer. <laughs> you asked me who owns it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we see in our data, usually sales enablement now reports into executive sales management. Mm -hmm. That's around 70% of what we're seeing. And in larger organization, there is still a trend having enablement reporting to sales ops around 30%, mm -hmm. but that's decreasing. So it's now more, enablement gets more mature. And so right. we will see more and more organizations that consider these two functions um, in, in parallel. And we also see a few that report to some kind of C-level function, and we're looking forward to what we see in this year's survey. Yeah, yeah so the, the growth of yeah. the chief revenue officer function and things like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay, Okay. so um, you just touched on something there a moment ago, like sales operations. And this is, again, um, you know, sales operations has been around for a long time, but it's not It's not everywhere right not every organization has a sales yeah. operations function so just explain to people what is a what is a good sales operation function and what should it do and what is it not mm -hmm. yeah so what we experience in the field is actually that the confusion around sales operations is the same as we see in sales enablement and it's you know it's like the chicken and egg problem <laughs> what was first of course sales ops teams as you said totally agree on this are around for a long time but also sales ops means many different things mm -hmm. to different people um so ideally a sales operations function is building the foundation of the sales organization in terms of process technology frameworks methodology you know, a forecast, a pipeline, process, compensation, territory analysis, um, maybe account methodology. So they create the framework of all of this. And then ideally, sales enablement can work with people to enable the sales force based on that foundation. So that means to, yeah, to make the house pretty and mm -hmm. valuable for all those who are in it. But sales ops is really more focused on on the foundation of it. That's right. how we see it. Mm -hmm. So more of the tactical, you know, uh, coming up with all the, the piece, like you said, like compensation, like territory management and all of that. And then sales enablement layers over the top with bringing all the other yeah. pieces, all the other pieces together. So do you think this is, um, do you think sales enablement is starting, is part of this process of sales becoming more, 
I would say like a broader function than ever before so that there's more there's more technology in it there's more process in it there's more people involved in it so do you think sales is fundamentally changing in that regard as opposed to being like the sales group over there just doing their thing yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah definitely so what we see in the market is that there is so much pressure on sales organizations nowadays. So what marketing organization experienced a couple of years ago is that this pressure is now on sales and Mm -hmm. technology is driving part of the pressure and the ever changing buyer Mm -hmm. um, behavior is driving that uh, change. And then of course, the next level of technology, I mean, you're all more familiar with that, all the AI technology that's coming. So that creates a totally different environment. And to your point around sales operations, so a lot of the analytical um, components in sales ops actually have not only tactical, but also more strategic relevance for sales leaders. Um, So there is a lot, a lot of change going on. And, you know, if you've asked people 20, 30 years ago, what is sales and art or a science? So probably most people would say, oh, it's an art. We really don't understand what they are doing over there. We put something in a pipeline and magic happens. And ideally, a closed deal comes out of that. Uh, and now it's really much more of a science. We are more about really understanding what works, what doesn't. We have more data. So... <clears throat> I'm thinking about this is very often we have too much data and sometimes Mm -hmm. really don't use the data in the right way. So if I look at all the crazy prospecting emails I get, so probably the data is out there, but it's not used. Uh, So I think there is also a a lot of uh, learning in in the market. How do we really use the data to make better decisions? So it's not about sending 50 prospecting emails out, but do the 21 that are mm-hmm. tailored, personal, create value, and they really make a difference. Yeah. I think there's a lot of changing in behaviors out there. Yeah, because, I mean, it's definitely becoming it's definitely becoming more complex. It's almost as as technology and as other, um, you know, like analytics, even AI, um, you know, come into it. I mean, sometimes people, I think, take the wrong, uh, you know, look at it the wrong way and they say, oh, well, that's going to make the salesperson obsolete. When in reality, I think it's going to make the sales person actually more important, but requiring a higher skill set. Do you, do you agree with that? Higher skill set, different skill set. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I think in general, the question is of what roles do we have in an organization? What kind of sales roles and what kind of roles do we need in the future? I think there is definitely also what we see a trend that sales organizations do hire salespeople. It's what we see in our <laughs> research year over year. So it's always interesting. And when you see others, are, they were going to be extinct. So mm-hmm. no organizations are hiring. As it, that's one fact about it. But uh, what are they looking for? So definitely they're looking for people uh, with a lot of business acumen, with mm-hmm. industry expertise, with different skill set. And what we found also in our buyer study, it, it's so important to know the buyer beforehand, to know the industry, their role, their business challenges, to have a business level conversation. And that is a very different skill profile if, if you look back at what worked 20 years ago. Um, and especially buying decisions that are more complex. I have a buying team. I make decisions in a committee. Mm -hmm. Um, So you need these people who can orchestrate such a process. And that's very different from, oh, I can make my quota with renewing existing contracts. So that is a very different sales role. And Mm -hmm. I think for renewals and things like that, they probably will be managed from service professionals in the future so we will probably see a decline of these sales roles and and just uh, as we come to the end here do you see um sales enablement really you know becoming a bigger and bigger part of of how companies operate and you know people finally sort of you know taking a book like yours or whatever and saying okay we have to take this more holistic view of, of things in order to be successful in the future yeah, we definitely see it is coming. There's a lot of interest and a lot of questions we, we get back into interest in enablement is really increasing because a lot of people are put into this role, not really 
knowing how big is it or what could it be or what should it be doing in the organization. If you look at the digital transformation as coming, ever-changing buyer behaviors, um, a lot of disruptions in industry. So there is definitely a, a sales transformation need in many, many organizations. And what is a discipline that can hold that together and orchestrate that so that it makes sense for the sales force? I think they're really these two layers sales ops should be able to mm-hmm. to provide an infrastructure a system that's ready for the future enablement should should be in a position that they can orchestrate what's needed what's the value messaging we need along the customer's path how do we make sure that the coaching approach supports what we do in, in, in training and how do we do that um in in this age of technology so it, it definitely could be the trajectory to drive the necessary transformation if it's set up the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's fascinating because as I said, I think it's everything is becoming so much more complicated and there are so many different moving parts that you need mm-hmm. a, a framework to bring it all together. So um, thanks, Tamara. Before you go, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, about CSO Insights and about the great book, uh, Sales Enablement, a Master <laughs> Framework to Engage, Equip and Empower a World Class Sales Force. Uh, available on Amazon and all good booksellers. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, let's start with the book. So, mm-hmm. so we are very happy that it's out there since May. Um, mm-hmm. So it really is a, a practitioner-based book. It's a research-based book. It has all the different perspectives. Byron, from a CSO and CEO perspective and consulting perspective, brings to the table. And I had a global sales enablement responsibility in the past, also come from many sales roles. And now I'm, look, four years now, um, I'm running for this time enablement research. So there is a lot of wisdom in that book. We are happy to feature a lot of successful enablement leaders in the book with case studies, quotes and and ideas. And it's practical. There are processes, templates and checklists and it's all structured by the clarity model so that at the end of the day you can have a cut and polished <laughs> diamond. <laughs> so that's the idea. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. What am I doing? I'm research director at CSO Insights. Um, so we are the research division of Miller Hyman Group. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm focused on all things sales enablement there, but also on general sales performance research and buyer studies and all the good stuff that's coming <laughs> from us. Yeah, yeah, great. Listen, thanks, Tamara. And I, and I definitely encourage people, obviously, check out the book, but also check out the, the research that CSO Insights and Miller Hyman does. It's, it's very... Yeah. Um, in depth and, and very useful, fascinating stuff. So, Tamara, thank you very much for your time today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline at CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you very much. So, I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.